Hey guys, Aaron here, another beautiful Saturday morning. Okay, well, it's a raining and nasty Saturday morning, but that's why we're in the garage today. I'm gonna to change the brake fluid on my 2006 Porsche Cayman S. This is my track car. I got a track session coming up next week, so we gotta get it prepped. All right, here's my car. What I like to use is the Modal RBF 600 brake fluid. It's a, a great racing brake fluid. I'll put a link to that in the description. You can get them on Amazon. The other tool that is so worth it is by Motive. It is a power bleeder. I have the one that has the, uh, I think they call it the Pro Cap or something. It's the European style one. Uh, it's the part that swivels right here so your tube doesn't get all hosed up, but uh, use this on all my cars. It's fantastic. You'll see it in use. This magnet, very, very cool. And the only other tool we're gonna need is an 11 millimeter crowfoot wrench like this. And you want one like this specifically, and I'll show you why in a minute. I'm gonna show you the process with every step that you're gonna need to take to do this so anybody can do it themselves. The first thing we're gonna do is loosen the bolts with a breaker bar uh, for your wheel, and then we're going to lift the car because we have to remove all four wheels. I obviously have a lift, so it's going to be easy to lift this up to do all four tires. If you just have jack stands and you can just remove two wheels at a time, that's fine. You're going to start with the rear because it's the furthest away from your brake fluid reservoir, which is right here. So you'll find just a little plastic panel that you can uh, open and you'll find this right there. So the order we're going to want to do this is we're going to do the, uh, in the U.S., that's the passenger rear, then the driver's rear. Passenger front, driver front. You wanna work your way from the furthest from the brake fluid reservoir up here because as you're pushing it through, we wanna get all of the new fluid into the rear. So as we're pushing new fluid to the other places, we're getting all the old fluid out. So just to explain our bleeder, we're gonna put the new fluid in the bleeder. It has a pump to pressurize this. We are gonna take this cap and we are gonna put it right here. So this will pressure feed the fluid into our reservoir cap and then we're going to loosen the bleed screws on each caliper and that will allow old brake fluid to come out while this is pushing new fluid in. So that's the whole concept here of the pressure bleeder. But first we need to remove the wheels so let's lift the car. And you only have to get it high enough so that you can get the wheels off. All right, got the wheels off. A little lesson here. Um, when I bought the car, it had these wheel studs on it. I love wheel studs. They make it so much easier to change your wheels. Um, but two of them actually came out when I took the nuts out. So it's a reminder that these things are a wear item. So I'm going to be ordering a new set of these because I don't know how old they are. And you need to replace them every year or two if you're tracking your car. All right, we are gonna use the whole bottle of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it. Nice little trick that I learned to uh, pour this stuff out is just make one long puncture over here and then just make a little air one over here and then it'll pour out nicely. So I'm just gonna pour the whole bottle into here. And you're just gonna take the lid, put it back on, screw it on tight. All right, as a precaution, just in case you get anything that leaks out, sometimes I like to put uh, couple towels around here just to catch anything if it does happen to spill out. Go ahead and remove the cap. So you got a little screen in here in most of these cars that you can remove but I always just keep them in place because it's you know screening fluid so in case there is anything in my bottle a chunk of something that should screen it out. And the Motive Power Bleeder has a long enough thing here where you can just leave that on the ground and you just uh, screw this thing on and tighten it. Right, just make sure it is nice and snug and uh, nothing should leak out on you. Once that is connected, we're just going to start pumping this up and uh, you want to pump it up to about 15 PSI for this top mark up here. So I'm just gonna start pumping and as it gets pressurized, you can see the fluid will start to uh, go through the tubing. So the other huge advantage of this is it keeps air out of your lines because there's constant uh, pressure, constant fluid being pushed through them. No air is getting into your lines and that's what's terrible for brake lines. All right, 
Okay, you can uh, just lock the handle in place there. And we can see that the fluid is uh, starting to come into here. Now, a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll suction out all of the fluid that's in here already as much as they can. Uh, but that means you gotta get the filter out and do that and possibly make a mess. And to me, that's like emptying your gas tank before you put new gas in it. I mean, as long as you do this regularly, all of that stuff is gonna get pushed through anyway. And it's just, a waste of time in my opinion. Okay, now for the cool part. We're going to the farthest away wheel and we're gonna use this cool guy. I told you that the magnet was neat. So uh, let me show that to you. All right, stick it on your caliper right there. So that means that your tube is gonna be nice and close to uh, this nipple right here. And so this just has a little plastic cover on it to protect it, keep dirt out. And this is your bleed valve. So this is where the fluid is gonna come out. The reason you wanted the 11 millimeter here is because not only is this an 11 millimeter, but uh, I'll show you here. So this bottle has a neat little thing. We'll get to that in a minute as well. But you just put this right over the nipple. And the reason you can't use a regular wrench is because uh, it would get trapped in there. So you want one that can go around the tubing and then go down onto here. So if you just use a regular open-ended wrench like this, then you're just making contact on three of the corners of the, uh, you know, like the nut on top. And this one, you get two additional corners. So you're much less likely to strip it with one of these. So all you do is slip it on and you give it a little turn counterclockwise. All right, I've never done these ones before, so we'll see how this goes. So just loosen it up enough and the fluid is already starting to come out, but I wanna loosen it a little more than that so it comes out a little faster. All right, there we go. Okay, so you don't, definitely don't take it off Loosen it enough and your fluid is going to start coming out. You're going to catch it in here. Your first uh, one, you're going to let go the longest because that's the longest run to get all of your old brake fluid out. And we're just going to let this go. Probably fill up almost half of this thing with it. Now, if you have really old brake fluid, it's going to be really dark and you're going to be able to tell once it starts getting lighter that your new fluid is all the way through. And that's when you need to stop but we're just gonna have to guess with this one because it's fairly fresh brake fluid already it looks like sometimes brake fluid is even a different color and i'm just gonna open it up my hair more to get a good flow on here and somebody before asked me like to torque spec to tighten these back down and i don't think well there probably is a torque spec but i've never seen anybody actually put a torque wrench on this thing um so when it's finished you're just gonna tighten it until it stops and then I just give it a little bit more so you want it uh, really snug but definitely don't over tighten it and strip it or break it and while you're in here doing this it is a great time to check your brake pads and my brake pads are getting close to needing some new pads so on each set of calipers uh, on the Cayman S at least, you'll see that there is a nipple on each side. So each uh, side with the pistons has fluid in it. So after getting all of the uh, main line drained on this side, you're gonna stop this and you're gonna do it on the other side as well to get the fluid that's inside your caliper here cleaned out. All right, I think that should be good. So I'm just gonna go ahead and snug this back down. So that's where you start feeling friction and just a little bit more to lock that off. And uh, you can see that the bubble is starting to go there. So no more fluid is coming out. So with this uh, motive thing, you just pinch this off right here, lift it up, let it drain into the bottle and stick it right here. So all of uh, anything excess will drain back into the bottle. Put our little protective cap back on and move over to the other side. So tube on this nipple, same process, loosen, drain. All right, and for this side, um, all we're doing is getting the fluid out that's right in there. So just a quick 
drain over there and we can uh, snug it back up. All right, so magnet, pull this guy off, move over to the other rear wheel and repeat. After each wheel, I like to come back over here, do a sanity check, make sure that uh, that's not leaking and check the pressure here. So uh, if it goes down a little bit, especially after the first one, we can just pump it back up, back to 15 PSI. After I'm done, I just transfer the old fluid back into this container, dispose of it properly. I'm kidding guys, I'm kidding, don't do that. So this is a little darker than my uh, new fluid, but not too bad. Chances are, if you haven't done this in a couple of years, yours is going to be darker than this. All right, all four are done. You can see that my uh, level here is right in the middle, so it's very nice. And the whole time you'll see air in this line, but don't worry about it. All the fluid is getting in there. So once you're done, you just uh, slowly unscrew this cap to release the pressure. Pressure is released, all of the uh, excess new fluid is going to come back into this container. And we can carefully disconnect it here. And just let it all run into here. So now you're just going to take some denatured alcohol, uh, run it through here, maybe pump some out, uh, clean this line out, put it away, let it dry, you're ready for the next use. And of course, do not forget to replace your cap. So that's it guys, not bad, right? If this was helpful, please subscribe to the channel, give the video a big thumbs up, stay tuned for more Porsche content. If you have any more questions or comments, please leave them down in the comments below. It helps the YouTube algorithm if you talk back to me. So appreciate it, I'll see you guys on the next video.